Mr. Ali in the under and welcome to episode number 96. Um, finally, you made it into Saarbrücken's Academy of Tone studio. Yeah, I um, uh, feel very honored. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you don't have to feel very honored. I feel very honored because I have been a huge fan of yours when I was a teenager and of course ongoing from the very first day. I think the first time I saw you was maybe with the Rodgar Monotones. And you were like the real deal Marshall man. I probably saw you playing with the Royal Grande. Yeah, yeah, I, did, I brought it today. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, cool guys playing loud the way it should be rock, you know? And um, yeah, maybe we have to explain the international um, audience because maybe you don't know, but we have. Um, I think it's about 30% German, and all the rest is Americans, 15%. Okay. UK is a lot of um, different. Ah, okay. My mic is yeah, going to some other place. You know what? Clip it here. So, and um, it's, it's important to understand um, the German, um, let's say, the, the, um, the geography and the bands where they're coming from. So. You were born in Hamburg. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but you were raised in Frankfurt. Frank, the Frankfurt area, and it's a little bit like in the U.S. That certain areas have kind of local heroes, uh, regional bands, and they eventually make it outside of the area. Yeah. And this is why we, uh, when we started uh, with, with this band, Broadcom Monotones, which was a local band in, in the Frankfurt area, and we kind of we were a cover band, as you are, you know, we we put all kinds of covers, and then we kind of. Uh, uh, discovered ZZ Top yeah. that, um, <laughs> because they felt they were like, I mean, Houston's not provincial, but you know, it's not Los Angeles and not New York. It's kind of a provincial band yeah. that has kind of a tongue in cheek thing going on. Yeah, yeah. They they lo may look a little dumber than they are, you know, <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's kind of a guys. strategy, you know, yeah. and, and, uh, and, and we liked that. And we were, and when we became like the first so maybe almost like a tribute band, you know, because yeah. nobody knew them in Germany. Yeah. And they came to Germany in 1980. 80 for the Rock Palace. For Rock Palace. That yeah. was a very large uh, TV program. Broadcast all over Europe, you know. Yeah. And, and, uh, and they immediately became big stars, you know. Yeah. And then we, we were kind of like the first tribute band and we tried to emulate the sound. Yeah. And we, and a, a friend of ours who was a, a kind of an amp whiz guy, yeah. he, 
saw photos of ZZ Top's amps from the World uh, Texas tour, which was the tour where they used, where they had like buffaloes and bobtails on stage and all this kind of cac cactuses and everything. And this is, they, the, uh, the ZZ Top amps called Rio Grande, and they, they, they looked pretty much like they were modded Marshalls, that, yeah. that, that, that we knew, and yeah. it's kind of from the sound. So this friend of mine, Thomas Reusen, who him? sadly died, we're going to talk about him. Yeah. Um, he made a Royal Grande amp for me and the other guitarists. And the thing with these amps was that, you know, when you play in a two, two guitars band, the main problem is to get, when one guy plays solo, then to get like the desirable volume jump or whatever, you know, get the balance right. Yeah. So he came up with a very simple idea. And these were like normal master volume marshals. And he said, well, yeah, we have one, we have two uh, gains and two Mas master volumes that we can switch yeah. back and forth. And that was kind of the beginning of our sound because then we could play both with the Marshall and, 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 and you know, when some one guy was soloing and then it got much louder, which was, yeah. of course, made the whole thing <laughs> even louder. <laughs> and, yeah, I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> but it was very exciting to hear, to hear that. And um, maybe, you know, Thomas Reusenzehn, you know, he... Is, is a guy that worked for the musicians. I, I think that you, you were very close with him. I just knew him mm. from the trade shows. Yeah. Um, but um, he, he has uh, done mods for everybody. Yeah. He has you know, done his little pedals. It's, it's like very comparable to, to people in the US. Like, yeah. uh, what did, 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 the, there were a lot, the, the classic generation of Marshall models, Lee Jackson, uh, yeah, Friedman, we'll see what, uh, Sandro, yeah. or whatever. Exactly. And, and the, the, we, we, we Get to these guys later, I guess. Yeah. But this was, this was, uh, in this is all like 1980, maybe Very 1981. Early. Yeah. This this amp is from, I mean, originally it's like a JMP model from 78 or something. But yeah. it's but the mod is from 82 or something. Yeah. So it's it's pretty early. Hey, um, we talk about a lot of other mm. mods mm. Uh, um, later in, on. Yeah. Later on. Um, maybe let's simply hear that amp. I'm plugged in into my switching system and can you unplug the... the yeah, just for a sec. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the proof. Now you can plug it back in. I'm plugged into the Royal Grand amp, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is how it sounds. Yeah. Raw as it should be. Yeah, it um, was, uh, and, and, and for us, of course, it was we, so we could play that kind of music, but halfway under control with yeah. these switching possibilities. And yeah. Just for my personal challenge, I want to try to get that sound with the M1 really quick, and then we continue because, you know, I'm always challenging myself. So this is the Roy amp, which is killer, and this is the M1, but has a reverb and a delay. Now that's off, so... Okay, no boo. Something like this. Darker. Mm. 
I can get there with a low gain. Let me tra challenge. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's <coughs> let's do it in the standard way. Maybe mm. people can get it too. Um, switch yeah, off. The, the idea is uh, I can explain a little bit because we are oh. today we're going to talk about some martial. It's it's the the amp is not the the, the preamp stage is not modded at all. It only has these two uh, pre volume two masters and it has two boosts. One is in, uh, in front of the tone stack and the other is after the tone stack. Mm. The, the, the boost that I have engaged now is kind of a mid boost in front of the tone stack. Play without. That's a normal JMP. Yeah. Altered. Yeah, it is a lot fatter. Yeah, and that's, that that was the that was kind of the genius of Thomas that he only made the, the not only made the amps more usable with this, with switching thing, which was very simple. Yeah. But he Ballsy. added the ballsiness. Kind of a tasteful ballsiness. Yeah. Okay, let me see if I can find yeah. that in my M1 as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's it's more than standard. I'm impressed. Uh, Almost. Yeah, but okay. For you guys, Fair enough. Yeah, mm -hmm. for you guys, just to, to to understand what I've done, gainful, low gain mode, because it's less gain than the full gain mode, and and we need the full gain pot for the beefiness, and then you come towards that sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But this this is it's not very gainy. You yeah. know, around that time, a lot of uh, amp modders. Did Went what too did, much? Did they? They kind of because this was the time when Mesa Boogie and had these cascaded preamps, you yeah. know. So it's, it's, it was very high gainy, and uh, but that usually makes Marshall sound thin. Yeah. I mean, you get a big crunch sound, but when you play solo, you lose all the, you know the yeah. the gutsiness. This, yeah. So so um, these amps are not tight at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, if for for today's standards. Um, they they have a big base that you have to fight. You know, it's not like chaka chaka chaka. That doesn't work with these amps. But but what but they are really expressive. Yeah. And 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 and, and they bring out like the best in a Marshall. That's what I always liked. And that that was our imagination. What ZZ Top did. What they really did. I don't have a clue. You know. I heard I heard something shocking. Yeah. Actually, it's shocking. Maybe later or not at that eighties, but. I heard that Billy Gibbons was using the GMP one. Yeah, yeah, later, later. I know yeah, later. Yeah, this okay. is the, but this was oh, that was this open. Is, okay. That was way after that. He yeah. was using a JP one and transistor uh, preamp. Uh, 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 no, the the, the the Marshall two preamp, the yeah. normal one, and then transistor uh, power oh, amps. You know? yeah. And 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 uh, and uh, an analyzer that analyzed the sound of pearly <laughs> gates, and then um, and, and the, the program was a, a EQ. No, no, no. I'm talking like classics. Easy top. Yeah. It's kind of interesting now because there was not a lot of evidence of how they sounded live in the 70s. Now you can find a lot of bootlegs on on, on YouTube. YouTube, and it's amazing how big that yeah. sounds. It's yeah. like. And and we you always ask how do you get this? Is this this is not a normal Les Paul in a Marshall. Something has to be done there. <laughs> so that was anyway. You try, this is always like always in art. You try to sound like somebody, and eventually you get somewhere else. Yeah. But but you it's it's nice to try. Yeah. Know, 
and it's a good challenge because yeah. it raises the bar somewhere yeah, and you have to use your imagination like well there is some magic we need that magic i have to see my modder my specialist to yeah. to make i want more you know so it's in the air and you know back in the days i mean i was a teenager i, th I maybe just started to play the guitar a year or something at the, in 1980 or something when you when you toured but it was so impressive i mean it was first you're playing your playing was spot on in those days. I don't know. I played the same. I'm playing the same shit the last 30 years or 40 years. Um, so when I listen to my early days records or recordings from, from, from cassette and whatever, I think I played very similar form to today. I, I just have a bit more repertoire by now, but yeah, my skills a, haven't I mean, changed I mean, the, since the, I'm 17. I think the most stuff happens in the first couple of years. Yeah. Uh, and the, t the sound, the sound yeah. happens in the first two years. Yeah, and you had that tone. You had that tone in the fingers. I mean, it's like you know when you, when you go. <laughs> you know, you mean it. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's all good. Um, I, um, no, I, I think I think the the, the interesting thing. Uh, about these things that did you have a challenge like you yeah. of course you 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 try to get somewhere you have heard somebody you 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 really try to get there and then eventually you find something original that's yes. what yeah. i said before you, i mean and, in the end you try to copy all the miola licks and you don't get them yeah. but you make up your own yeah. that sounds similar you know and and then maybe because you don't manage that in a way you end up creating your own style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's it's the same thing with this with this guitar. This is by a a, f a friend of mine, J Jörg Tandler, German luthier. Jörg Tandler is a great guy, and of course, this is also it, because we are in the we're in the ZZ Top uh, era now. In the nineties, uh, American luthier uh, called John Bolin, mm -hmm. he made something like this for ZZ Top, which was was, was a jazz guitar body and a Firebird. Uh, neck. neck. Yeah. Now uh, I went to Jörg and he had this old jazz guitar body in his workshop mm -hmm. and I said can you make me something like this and then he started to experiment and the, whether the scale length is not a Gibson scale length it's, it's a Strat scale yeah. length because it looked better I think <laughs> that's what he said and yeah, this is not a custom color but it's a paper napkin yeah. and it's just <laughs> lacquered onto the guitar. It's, nice. You can buy it in a hardware store it's a normal paper napkin, and it's really sturdy. It looks great, and yeah. and of course it doesn't sound like a jazz guitar at all. <laughs> but, it rocks, yeah. But it's 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 a, it's a great guitar, and I brought it just for you know to show that this we we kind of ex we were inspired by the quirkiness of these guys, and 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 we tried, and of course we then we wrote original material, German language stuff, and made tons of records. And, and you had a hit. Okay, I had a hit which was, the which was more of a funk tune, actually, with German rap in it. Yeah, but what machst du mit my blood and spiel kaputt? What macht der Papa mit dem Papa? How the lyrics? Yeah, it was it, it, kind of a fun fun thing. But we're still, we're, 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 uh, next year will be our 45th anniversary. So the band is still... Still, still together, yeah. That's so cool. With old farts, <laughs> but... Um, still cool. Which, yeah. Fun, yes. fun, yeah. Old, fun farts. Yeah, talking about Jörg Tandler, um, I mean, he's mm. quite a character. I have a maple strut from him. I have a, a nylon string, string acoustic guitar from Jörg Tandler. Killer, killer, Luthier. Mm. Um, from like Koblenz area or... Yeah, he's originally from, from my area. area that moved. He, he, he's a Hesse, you know. <laughs> um, I, I'm trying to find out a, an area which, like when Bavaria is Texas, then Hessen would be, I don't know, I'm trying to, somewhere in the Midwest or something. Yeah. Uh, or, uh, anyway, forget yeah, it. But, um, but Jörg is, is, uh, is a real character. It's a real character. He, he makes a guitar, sells it and goes fishing. Yeah, you know, and he gives a fuck. He gives, you know, yeah. he, he gives a fuck if he has, he have, if he has a concept it's like, this like, this looks cool. You get this, no discussion. No, um, I'm, 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 it, it made sense. And yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. with the with the shorter scale length, it it I had to agree. It did look that good. It looked it looked better that way. <laughs> and actually, it sounds better that way. Yeah, um, and he knows what he's doing. Yeah, so and and he and there's there's a couple of those guys, uh, uh, like in my hometown. Uh, in 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 Rotgau, uh, the, there's a luthier called Nick Huber. 
Of it's course. Pretty, it's pretty, uh, by now, pretty well known all over the world. Yeah. International, yeah. Makes great... Great guitars. Great guitars. He used to be on uh, uh, the next floor above our rehearsal space. <laughs> he, he just moved. Yeah. He didn't want the noise anymore. Of course. Yeah, yeah I mean, if you... If you heard enough in your life, you are you you um, enjoy some moments of quietness. <laughs> yeah, no, I think we he, we all do. He had to move into a larger space. I'm just yeah, making, yeah, yeah. Making jokes. But, but anyway, and, yeah, yeah. So so this is this is of course we're like, and I think it's all over the world. There, there there's there's people um, who have the same listen to the same bands or like the same stuff, and and they build like amplifiers or guitars, and, and there's always a a twist, uh, a regional twist to what they do, which makes it interesting when you go to these guitar shows. You you see people from all over the world working on maybe on the same subject, but slightly differently. Uh, that, that's cool. Absolutely. And I see a question in the chat here. What is the setting of your amp? And it's quite easy. I just make a photo mm -hmm. and we put this on our... Lugipedia, so you can find Ali's tone there. With it. it's, it's, There's no magic. It's the classic no, channel. It's it's the, I'm in, on the classic channel, so we can sort of uh, separate our sounds a little bit. And, and I'm on the vintage. And by the, way. the rest is is just. Uh, <laughs> it's, and by the it's, way, it's a, it's a facial expression. <laughs> And the tone is in the fingers, especially with Ali. Yeah. I mean, you know, the first time I saw you, you had that big tone already. And I think um, it is in your head. I mean, this is like, you know, you had that vision of that fat tone. And, yeah. so, and so when you want to sound like that, you can get there. Yeah, it's, it's, but this is, I mean, there's some physical things. Like, for instance, I have compared, I have like these really short, chubby fingers. I mean, same same not, shortness. This is, I, it's fingers of a tuba player, to be honest. Um, and I have kind of soft fingers, Tips, yeah. which usually uh, you don't, there's not a lot of treble. In my left hand, the other guitar, <laughs> right, like seriously, yeah. the other guitarist in, my, in our band, he has very dry hands. Uh -huh. So it's so he has he has a more focused, tre more treblish sound in his hand. You know, it's <laughs> it's it's if I play with uh, his the, his guitar through his amp, I sound totally, totally different. different. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and and this is and, and without effort, he just yeah. does it. You know, yeah. as I do with yeah. you, my stuff, and and that's 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 uh, that also kind of sets a limit to the idea. I buy gear to sound like this or this because it because it, no, you won't sound like that. Yeah, and and then yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, it's it, tone starts in your personality, in your vision, mm. and of course in your physics, and then. In all the decisions you make, it's like the strings you're using, the pickups you want. Yeah, this is the first setup. Is, these are 11s. <laughs> this one goes to 11. <laughs> yeah, this one also goes to 11. <laughs> and I, you know, this is all this uh, myth about uh, thickness. Of about the and, and there's it's just recently there's there's been this talk about like yeah, th lighter strings sound the same. Yeah, can be. But if you have a little bit of adrenaline on stage and you play light strings, it's that, a different thing. It's, it's terrible, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Um, I play, sometimes I played with 12s. I mean, not, not with the monotones, but in, in another setting. Yeah. If, if you're like fired up enough, no problem with 12s. If the, if the frets are okay. Yeah, sure. If yeah. the setting matches, yeah. The, uh, yeah, setup job needs to be right. But, just talking about setup jobs, mm -hmm. um, I have uh, put down a, a list. We talked about Jörg Tantler. Mm -hmm. um, another guy from Frankfurt is Matthias Schindelhütte. Do you have any connection with him? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, complicated German name, fantastic guy. <laughs> uh, first of all, he, 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 uh, he rose to fame because he was the one who could really repair vintage guitars a way that you, you couldn't see anything. Very, very precise. Very, very, you know, never the the the, the problem of of any kind of uh, uh, value loss. Yeah. And then he became the master of relic finishes. Exactly. You know? And this is and he made like 
guitars look like an old burst. I mean, he was not yeah. making any look, look forgery. Look at my guitar. Yeah. Yeah. This, this guitar looked yeah. shit because it was orange. Yeah. And this is why I got it cheap. And he made it look like it looks now. And it, you know, ah. Uh, I... <laughs> I'm in drop tuning. G. No. I play an A, but I sound like G. Oh. So this is a, what did I do last time with this guitar? And, and uh, those guys. I have a, a have the the your the sister guitar from York with me uh, anyway. Oh yeah, we have to play gold gold on gold. <laughs> gold, gold on gold later. Yeah. Um, no, but but it's the same thing. The, the, as the musicians emerged through the years, so do the technicians. Mm -hmm. You know that it's we we part of the same scene, and uh, one you know profits from the other, and. Uh, and so, so, like, especially those the Luther guys and M guys have developed extremely over the last couple of years. Yeah. How much have, have would have wished to know the guys from now, 30 years ago? Oh, you know? Yeah, we, we, yeah. If with that kind of knowledge, who is good at this and that? Yeah. You, I mean, we we spent hours, I think, with York and with all those guys in the beginning, and there was a learning curve for both of us, for us. As yeah, with yeah, the Luthiers. Yeah, yeah. And then now with all this experience on both sides, you can go to people and they do such great work. I'm yeah. and, and I totally know, okay, when I'm talking pickups, I go to Andreas Glockmann. Mm -hmm. If I want the best uh, you know, kind of make this a fake 57, go to Andreas Schindelhütte because hey, this is this looks I mean, I haven't seen anything better than than this I mean, yeah and 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 and, and he, he he makes own own guitars and so it's it's the whole variety yeah. and 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 those guys you know they they're almost like they're part of the band yeah, you know, yeah over yeah. over 20 years over 25 years and and have saved my butt such a lot of times you know and did refrets and all all kinds of stuff and at the highest quality and i'm, I'm very grateful that they are part of the Scene. They are around. Yeah. They are part of the scene. You know? What about Andreas Lang from Frankenthal? Yes, yeah, it's, it's same guy. I mean, it's yeah. just a different yeah. area. Yeah, it's a little south of uh, uh, Frankfurt. Frankfurt. There's a very lively music scene around the Mannheim. cities of Mannheim, and there's a lot of musicians, a lot of professional musicians actually there. And so there's job, there's work for a guy like that, and he does absolutely extremely beautiful like frets and everything. So Exactly. He, this is yeah. why I put my other goal top yeah. to him. And he just called me today and said, it's finished. So maybe on Monday I will pick that up and I can show this uh, new fret job to you guys next week, mm. uh, Wednesday. Yeah. Mm. I'm very excited to see how he does it or how, what the results are. Yeah. And um, we can talk about all the, um, the, the amp guys, but I would first like to talk a little bit more about the music side. Mm -hmm. um, okay, you, there's the Rodka Monotones and, and we met a couple of times and then there was a, a, a nice thing where you had a double booking with Edu Zanki and the Rodka Monotones, I remember that. And then you needed a sub and Ali actually did it. He came all the way from Frankfurt two hours in the car coming to the public pool of Klein Blittersdorf, yeah. wherever the fuck that is. <laughs> he didn't know what I described, you know, come there. So sitting at a pool in sunny, sunny Germany, right next on the French border, we could see France on the other side of the river, being in Germany. Mm -hmm. He was explaining me a little bit about, this is the set for next week. Yeah, so it was a, it, it was a gig full of original music. Yeah. And I had messed up my... <laughs> Uh, booking, booking calendar, calendar. Yeah. and he and Thomas saved me and I said this before I owe you at least one terrible gig <laughs> that I have to do <laughs> no 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 all good all good I, for, for me the whole thing was important because of course I had to learn the songs for only one gig but it was an important gig it was a, a, a TV show you know this was a, a, what was it a, something on TV with Edo Zanki yeah 
uh, you know, it needed to be uh, proper. And you know what happened? I prepared so well that when I came to the studio with the band and Edo, we rehearsed one song and he, and he said, oh, the guy knows the shit, let's go and have some ice cream. Yeah. And I said, please, let me, <laughs> let, let me play a little bit more. But anyway, it worked and I had that thing. And then this was leading to my next uh, employment from um, Purple Schultz because Purple Schultz back then needed a new guitar player and he knew Edo Zanki and then Edo you know, said, yeah, there's this guy from Saarbrücken, Thomas, um, you, you have to just call him. He, you know, he, he's easy, everything, whatever he, I don't know. The result was Purple Schulz in Cologne was, in Cologne, big city, there's the old kind of um, city wall mm -hmm. and they have towers. And in one of those towers, I was playing. This was 93 maybe, mm. I, I don't know, or maybe mm. five or four or whatever. And the, the thing was, the door was closed because the place was packed. Purple Schultz, Schultz couldn't get into the concert to hire me. So I didn't know that, but the next morning, he actually got my number from somebody and somebody said, I have to call Purple Schultz. And I said, oh, Purple Schultz. I mean, back then, Purple Schultz was yeah. kind of a, yeah, a yeah, big was, act. Was, was, so. And I was already leaving town and blah, blah, blah. But in the end, I ended up playing in Purple Schultz for a couple of years because of, you know, step by step. Yeah, as, 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 as it is, you know. Yeah. And I, I worked with, you know, I, I've made three records with a drummer that I, the, for the, the first record that I did, I didn't, I haven't eaten, uh, haven't eaten even, I didn't audition anybody at all. I haven't even heard a lot of stuff, what he did. No, I, I, he was just recommended by another drummer who said, get him and don't ask, you know? And, and it was exactly right. Who, who you are talking about? Moritz Müller. Moritz Müller, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, if, if we both played with Moritz yeah. Müller, um, Moritz Müller is uh, what we call a Drecksau. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we, MF. <laughs> yeah, mother, yeah. And... He is that kind of guy who is um, a great technician. He knows exactly what you want, and he got balls. If I mean, and then uh, you know, some sometimes when he's when he's on the spot, he's just brilliant. Yeah, yeah and the, and and who was the other drummer that recommended him? Ralf Guske. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> no, uh, a friend of mine from Frankfurt, also a fantastic drummer, Andreas Neubauer. He's okay. more of a jazz guy. Uh, <laughs> of jazz funk, also jazz funk guy, but I needed a muscular yeah. fusion drummer. Of course. And, and, and so I, I, I said, well, I'm going to ask him. And I sent him some stuff, and it was like a lot of like odd meters and merciless No, no problem bullshit. for him. No problem and, for him. And then he came and played the whole record in two days, yeah. and we had time to get pizza, and you know, it was it was like, oh, I got I to gotta rehearse my stuff, man. <laughs> and, and this... But you know, this is how, and it's always because somebody tells you, yeah. this is this right, yeah. this guy is right, you know. And on that record, which was kind of your first solo record? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's also Helmut Hattler. Helmut Hattler was a, also kind of a German bass legend, you know, yeah. from a sort of crowd rock fusion, mm. something. It goes back way yeah, into yeah. the early 70s, but he's in, in, extremely original, uh, fantastic. A pick bass player, yeah. but you immediately recognize him. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic musician. I, I, I sometimes play with Raoul Walden, who, yeah. he, which you also do sometimes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and when I ask him to play the pick, I ask him do the Hutler. <laughs> <laughs> and Raoul said, "Okay, I do the Hutler." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but Helmut Hutler is a guy. Fantastic music. I mean, he had a duo with uh, Joe Kraus. Yeah, they, they, in the nineties, they even had some success in the U.S. It was kind of they made kind of a, a, a kind of a dance floor, few acid jazz, uh, even with hip, with hip hop elements thing, and that was uh, uh, very interesting. He's he's a veteran, but he he he's not like he's not. Uh, Standing still, he's still developing and still trying new stuff, and that's all. He's kind of like a couple of years in, in, ahead of me, and if I'm that young at that age, then it's okay. You know? <laughs> yeah, 
And um, talking about your solo records, mm. is the organ now your second or third? No, this is the this is actually the fourth okay. record. I made two uh, fusion records mm -hmm. on ESC records, Rex, and yeah. and uh, they they I think they're still either either uh, available or they are on on, on uh, you can find stuff on YouTube. There's a lot of from that. Um, uh, it's Spotify, I don't want to recommend. <laughs> yeah, uh, for, um, for, for obvious reasons, um, because no money for the artist. Only um, yeah. uh, well, on YouTube too, but the, the, the different, sorry. Yeah. Um, but but uh, those were kind of, you know, and you did that too. You, you kind of moved from being a sideman or a band member into this, I got to do it myself, I got to write stuff, I got to try to you know get all produce everything and so on and that was a big big step for me and mm. I, I before that and we come to that mm. we, we both had a, a long time of being sidemen um in the biggest acts of in, germany and in in, in in big acts and it's it's great it's 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 rewarding to play in front of fifty thousand people but it they don't necessarily come because of you of but, course but, <laughs> this is so what you learn one day it's it's not to, to be overly idle but it's sometimes it's better to play in front of 50 people who come because of you yeah um and and uh and then i made these records and and they they were pretty much fusion records of jazz, well, no, fusion is the wrong word. They were jazz rock records because it, it was kind of rock based with Moritz and this is where I come from. And and also I, when I was a teenager, I was a fan of like the very early jazz rock bands, uh, Ma Vishnu, Return to Forever yeah. and so on. This is <clears throat> part of where I come from yeah. musically. And so we made these records and then uh, after that, I, I took Morris with me and made a blues record, mm -hmm. uh, which was also very interesting because I asked a lot of people who couldn't really play blues. I mm. mean, making fake blues is as easy yeah. and as un Any, unnecessary yeah. as nobody, nobody need, in the world yeah, needs yeah. that. But if you ask people who can really do it and you learn and listen, and, and I, I was trying to... Uh, to play stuff that was not so common, you know, mm. like very old stuff from the 20s or so, and but in a new arrangement, something. And that was very instructive and, and great. And then the last record I've done, this is, uh, this is a record with an organ trio plus a singer. Mm -hmm. So it's like a jazz organ trio, you know, the classic uh, Wes mm -hmm. Montgomery or Jimmy Smith type trios. And it, it was kind of an idea, you know, there's these cooking shows where they throw five ingredients on the table <laughs> and you've got to do something with it, you know? And, and that's like the idea. This is not a lot of stuff. You have, a, this is a jazz guitar and I, it's all played with M1. And a, with a jazz guitar, mostly clean, sometimes the uh, vintage, vintage channel, channel, yeah, channel yeah. on three, yeah, on four. Yeah, and, and that's actually, I listened to the album and I thought, man, I haven't heard the M1 Anyway, or any, um, there, there was nothing like like that uh, on your record where I could have uh, the M1 in that sound. So, what 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 was the guitar? It was a, a, a well on the record. I played a a D'Angelico hollow body, you know, from Korea or something, yeah. um, and with twelve okay O twelve strings <laughs> flat wound. Uh, so flat even wound. even the even the distorted sounds, which is a little bit of a challenge. You, you want that if you do that. <laughs> um, but uh, it, I, coming back to this cooking show thing, yeah. it was the idea, no, 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 no. I'm not going to take the, 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 the Gibson hollow body for that. I'm going to stick and I'm going to dial as long as I, and then we get somewhere. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's the great thing about the uh, one did it. You know, you, yeah. you, you dial a around and it does it yeah it sounds and, killer and I, I'm, I'm live, live i'm playing a guilt an old guilt guitar which i learned to love a lot because they have very lively beautiful guitars and they have for being really hollow guitars they have a great sustain and, mm -hmm. and i i i, I like that and and they're affordable because no this is the new cd yeah, yeah, we have a come on we have to show it when there's a there's where's the camera do, 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 do. can we focus this 
So what is the official title? Ali Neander Organ Quartet. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's jazz double point songs. Because yeah. it's songs, you know, it's a wonderful singer, Carol Trischler, and she, and oh, yeah, the rest, the rest of the guys voice. is rest of the guys are like Ralf Guske is a guy you you might see later, I, a, a drummer that I've been playing for 30 years now almost, and and who's a, a incredible a player, you know, on all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you know? I played with Ralf as well, as we all share the same yeah, yeah. whatever. Germany, in, in that case, Germany is a small country. Yeah, yeah. but it's great because mm. we, when you have like your network, it's always you know if if you want to know anything about somebody else, it's like okay, there is some experience already. And it's easy because like, it's only a phone call away. Yeah, and, and, and the, the great thing about if, if things are not too large, yeah. that you cannot stick to your own sect too much. Yeah. You have to go somewhere else. Yes. And this is like, like you, you see that you, if, if we, within 15 minutes, we come from being a ZZ Top a cover band to ECM records or, or you know, and, yeah. and it's... It, because there's people who know about it and you, you're willing to learn and you try to, you know, you try to emulate stuff and, and you're interested in other stuff and then, wow, that's great, let's do that, you know. Wow, okay, so um, we, we have to talk, just to talk, to the, the musician said one more thing. In 1997, we both had our biggest concerts ever, right? Yeah, no, it was not my biggest concert, but but we. I we, played the biggest there, but uh, we we played um, 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 Motodrom in near Heidelberg, uh, yeah. Hockenheim. Hockenheim, yeah. This was one hundred fifty thousand. Okay, that 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 that's that. And you played? Yeah, I I played. There were three gigs, and we 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 both, as I said, we 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 were both sidemen in. In opening acts for Michael Jackson. Opening <laughs> acts for Michael Jackson. Sidemen for uh, German pop acts, which were really successful yeah. at the time. Uh, Tom, Thomas played with a girl, so, kind of a, a, a pop hip hop group, Tic Tac Toe. Yeah. And I played with a also with a female rapper called uh, Sabrina Zetlur. And and we were on the same, and we didn't know about that. No. <laughs> um, we were on the same tour. He was just doing opening. Uh, uh, other opening gigs uh, than me. Uh, we uh, we played in That's Bremen me. and yeah, and I, I've done the Hockenheim Ring and uh, mm. what was it? Uh, Gelsenkirchen Park Stadion mm. and blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. So so Munich. this is we're talking like stadiums. I mean, I played this. These gigs were like fifty to sixty thousand people, and Hockenheim is like a large uh, racetrack. And there's uh, 150. 150. This 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 was the yeah. biggest yeah. Uh, gig wow. in my life. Mm. Um, yeah, and uh, so this is this is the, the whole team. Let let me show you. And there's also some other familiar faces uh, on this picture. That's me. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Can you see that? Okay. And this gentleman is Wolf Simon, the drummer that I met in Purple Schulz. Yeah, yeah. Guess what? So you know, this is one leads to another. And this is Inge, and there's a lot of famous people from the music industry. Um, and I we, think this is where you met Jennifer Batten, didn't you? Yeah, I met her before, but this is we met again yeah. and again mm. and again. Mm. Um, but it's good, you know, our paths are crossing. Mm. Um, you know, there's so so many. This world is small. Ah, and by the way, here, come on, while I show, show you the, this picture, this was a 150,000 shot. Wait a minute, this is. This is the one. Um, I had a three-minute spot because the, the three girls had to change dresses. So this is how it looks on a big stage, or this one here. So this is me. This little point in front of the sea of people. See there, people, 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 people. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so this is life, and I played behind my neck. Look at this in front of. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is how it looks. So. Uh, okay. So, glory days. But I'm totally happy that this was a phase in my life, which I've done. I had so much entertainment by all the yellow press and the girly shit going on. I mean, this band broke up in front of running cameras on television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Germans it's, know that. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a very notorious story. <laughs> it, right before 
uh, sold out tour or something, yeah? We had to sue uh, Michael Jackson's management to get our money. Yeah. And we had, uh, we won in, at first court. Um, then they had like the next level mm. and we lost. And then the whole band was um, yeah. uh, legal action. And in the third instance, in the third level, yeah. uh, the highest possible, we won. Mm. So we got our money. But it was kind of, a, you know, try, try to sue yeah. the management and of Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah, it's, and it's, I, it's, I won. It's, it's, <laughs> I, want a, I want a new hobby. No, the... the um, the, to me, the most interesting thing, since I've been doing this for 40 years now, um, is that I think you, you would agree that we had the chance to be in these kind of circumstances, play in front of so many people, have this sort of showbiz thing around, playing, in, and then go home and tell your neighbor, it's cool, but it's not the coolest thing on earth. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fair enough to have made, but it's not that... This is the, f the fulfillment of fulfillment no. of our all our dreams. No, no, definitely not. It's it's yeah. okay. Yeah, it, you know? it, it it is just a job that you do, and it's it's a nice job as you do it because you know everybody does mm. care and the catering. But as being an artist, yeah, there is a there is this is not fulfilling you as an artist. It's it's, it's, it's a craftsmanship yeah. and, aspect to and, it and, more. And, and, and it's and it's 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 fun to play in front of a lot of people. It's not the, that that's not the problem. The problem is a little bit that this is you're kind of distant from yourself. You know, yeah. you you you're working this it's it's the people are nice, you're working like I, I played with uh, as a sideman for a long time, still do. Yeah. And I like everybody else and it's great. It's fun to do that. But But I've, I learned that these concerts, and I played and uh, opened up for the Purple and yeah. everybody else, and it was always a little bit of a survival thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I've seen opening acts being totally mistreated. I saw yeah. King's X opening up for ACDC being... I mean, they were awesome. A it's great a, band. A Such fantastic great, band. Yeah, yeah. And, but the, 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 the audience was just... A C D C. Get out, get out yeah, of our yeah, face! Yeah. And 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 you, so so sometimes it's it's not that desirable. Yeah. <laughs> But I I was lucky um, because all the opening shows that I played were at least so friendly that in a way we didn't suffer that much. But I know it's hard. I open up for the purple ones too, uh, Sting, and. Um, Somehow I was lucky, but I saw other bands really suffering. <laughs> well, you know, and this has nothing to do with the band or how good you are no, or no, something. No, it's just it's if you're in the wrong, yeah. you're in the wrong place <laughs> at the wrong, wrong time, time, you know. <laughs> and 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 you. Anyway, it's, yeah. it, I think it's it's I think it's it's good. It's nothing that I regret, yeah. but it's not that I nothing that I to overly miss. Yeah, and you don't strive for that. Uh, when it happens, it's fine. You know, but it's it, it's it's nothing that I'm. And for me, the, the thing is, I'm not. If somebody would ask me to do that, I'm not even sure if I would go there anymore because I've done that, and I have my good. You know, now I'm at a different stage yeah, yeah. in my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it's okay if you put the money on the table and if if the people are nice, I would say, okay. And then I would be nice and I would do but, it, but, but it's not like, oh, let's get that job. You the, know? The, the thing is, anyway, since the music business is, has yeah. shrunk so much, yeah. there's no money anyway. <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you are an opening act now, you have to buy yourself into a tour or something. So, so anyway, the, the, no complaint here. <laughs> but, uh, we're having enough fun, you know, <laughs> but, and we have uh, strange stories to tell our grandchildren. Okay, a little bit more about guitars. You brought this 1974, yeah. Um, just for fun, yeah. let me... Because it's, it's, I thought, I bring something, uh, so you are the like benchmark for 60s strat, so I, I thought I'd bring a 50s strat and a 70s <sighs> strat, yeah. and, and so it sort of form uh, a I frame, yeah. <laughs> It, we played together as well in the Rock Anarchy and with Jürgen Zöller, another German yeah. drummer from BAP. And we, uh, what was the singer name? Um, um, uh, Dan Lucas. Dan Lucas, the, the guy who was senior. You know, and another story of, you know, you always, we, I, we got a list of songs that he wanted to sing. And 
there was um, uh, uh, don't stop believing and, yeah. and you know and all that and, and we both thought oh god no <laughs> we always avoided that you know and now we have to play it so we got to the rehearsal and we were kind of prepared and here comes this guy like friendly guy and he nails everything in the in the original key effortless and we both look at oh we better learn the middle part <laughs> you know yes yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was such a lesson, you know. Yeah, yeah. The guy, I, it was. I was impressed. You know, usually singers that go high and that high. You know, yeah. we're talking Journey. We're talking um, more than a John feeling. Farm and John yeah. Farnham. John um, Farnham. The, the voice. The you voice. Know. You know, in it, original key and, and and we now it's an F. You know, and the guitarist, <laughs> you know, said we can do it in E because it's easier. It's no problem. It says no, no. No, we no. Do it in F. <laughs> yeah. So this was a great challenge for us, actually. Yeah, um, but it, anyway, so so we are also play together, and Ali sometimes chooses the other strat. You know, yeah. like yeah. one day you had to. Uh, where, where's your fifty six uh, uh, maple? Let Let's make a little bit strat. Uh, strat. Strat. Yeah. Strat. strat. <laughs> Your guitar, killer. Um, sometimes Ali is the guy that likes the stuff that other people don't like that much, like your what is Wasser Gas Scheiße. Gas Scheiße. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what, what a, aging musicians sit a, uh, in front of computers a lot at, yeah. at times. I'm afraid. No, I I found a, 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 a Strat body on American eBay that was made out of. Pipes, you know, like uh, uh, plumbing pipes. Plumbing pipes. pipes. Yeah. Copper plumbing pipes <laughs> around, uh, around a, like the middle part of an I don't know Strat. Korean Strat body. Yeah. It was it called Stratocaster body altered, <laughs> yeah. and and I said I got, I got to have this, so I I, I bought it, Weird. came over from the states, and I got it, put a neck on it. And it is kind of it was kind of heavy, uh -huh. but it sounded pretty good, yeah. you know. And I played live with it. The thing is, there were there were a lot of plumbing things, you know, yeah. attached to it, like big knobs, big and knobs for water, and, and, and it was kind of, you know, it, you had to really take care of it because it would it eventually would fall apart. But it looked great, and 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 it sounded actually pretty good, you mm -hmm. know. It, it was, and and it, so yeah, I, I'm 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 this. Um, Shelter, dog shelter for strain <laughs> guitars that uh, have that are left new, over out and, there in the cold and need a new home. But they need a new home. Yeah. and somebody that loves them, which yeah. you give them a yeah, lot yeah. of love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, I do. Yeah, and this has the alembic preamp built in. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a. I, I, a long time ago, I kind of I bought a guitar that had this another one. It, it looks mm -hmm. different. The old one is black. Um, in it, it's you can adjust it how much boost it is. It's just a clean boost, mm -hmm. and it's for some, it's really good for strats that have kind of normally kind of like weaker pickups, and it's not to boost it really a lot. Just to give it this little thing, and it's all and it's a buffer. Yeah. You know? First, no boost. Comes in very handy. Yeah. 
And then you can adjust the, the amount of boost. You can make it very slight, but and that's 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 good for those guitars because the, the, those pickups are not really loud and not yeah. really gutsy. But I like like these these kind of <laughs> proletarian rock strats, you know. Proletarian. <laughs> and and, and I, I, I like those. Strats, it's it's a different thing. Fifty strats can be, uh, they're not really user friendly in the first place. I mean, this guitar plays really well and, and mm. so on, but th some of these guitars are kind of rough. Yeah. You know? And and uh, a long time ago, I, I was in I was in Austin, Texas, and I saw the band of Lou Anne Barton, like uh, a local hero singer in in, in Austin. I forgot. I'm sad. I forgot the name of the guy. Big guy. And. He played a 57 strut into a basement. Mm -hmm. And that is like, this is, I mean, this is rough. You yeah. know, there's no reverb. It's, <laughs> this is probably the strings are kind of old, you yeah. know, and they play middle position, you know, and, 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 yeah. and it's, Maybe clean it, and it's, 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 it's and it's, like uh, this. and it's, 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 it's a fight, you know, yeah. and then, but it's, it sounds great. And then he played with his guitar for the first set, then was a break, and then he came back and he had a new strat. And for the first 15 minutes, I thought, that sounds better, but only 15 minutes. <laughs> and then I kind of, now I can go back. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more interesting. It's, yeah. more, it's more of a personal thing. More character. More character. <laughs> that probably brings us to this vintage guitar thing in a yeah. way, does it? <laughs> It's not. It's not this typical. What you, the normal hand? I mean, the, 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 even the the neck pickup doesn't sound like a Hendrix. It's more this Jimmy Bond type thing. Yeah. But I'm just getting the settings yeah. because people want to know how we set the amp. Um. Uh. It's it's this Jimmy Bond thing and. And it's uh, the more you you learn to like that, for, you like that more and more from every year to every year, because it's, yeah. it's there's so much expression in there and so much feel in there, and it and um, and it's it's not the typical Overdrive, muscular yeah. thread blues thing. It's yeah. it, it he hardly ever goes above the fifth fret, and he doesn't need to, <laughs> you know, because. The good thing about this maple neck next you can tell where the original yeah, yeah. owner played. That, this is this is not me. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you come close, this is craters. I'm talking. Yeah. This is not. This is not just discoloration. But there's it's almost like a scallop. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, let let let's show it to the camera. Yeah. Uh, are we getting closer? Like this. I bought this guitar 30 years ago, and it was like that 30 years ago. Can we see? Yeah. Wait a minute. You have to get, get really good. See the craters. It's unbelievably uh, played. Yeah, and and, the, and and this is and I can show you. Um, it's hard to see in the. It's yeah, hard it's, to see in the. You camera. see, it's almost like scalloped. Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute, like this maybe. Uh, 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 uh. I can see it very. Yeah, here you can see. You know. There's actually wood is missing. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's, yeah. that's that's by the almost way, like scalp and. And the thing is, this guy, Same and you can here. you could absolutely tell that this guy was playing. Yeah. You know, uh, one million times. Yeah. Because you can you can this you you see where he went, and then of course you from the backlight things you can see that he does he, he did a lot of soul <laughs> and then chip off the backlight. So. Yeah. There is a person out there. I bought this guitar in 1992, so 30 years ago, in Germany. Somebody brought it over from the States. I really would like to know the guy who, 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 who was course, playing it. Yeah. Who's playing it in, who was playing it in blues clubs for 30 years, and then it said, "Well, it's broken. I need a new one." You know, <laughs> and because uh, this is 
I mean, if ever, ever, ever relic was the, also this sort of uh, Corona by the um, Travelo bar. It, <laughs> and that was not me. It, yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's. Uh, it is. I love the guitar because yeah. it's because it's 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 what what vintage guitars are, and I think we c come to the subject. Yeah. Um, vintage guitars are not necessarily the best guitars. No. But you like to be around them. Yeah. You kind of. Because, oh yeah. yeah. They have their own story yeah. and they have their own lyrics. So, you did a lot of demos for vintage guitars uh, for Guitar Point in Maintal. Mm -hmm. Um, large, uh, I think the largest European vintage guitar yeah. store, close to Frankfurt. Incredible stuff over the last oh, yeah. twenty years, and and uh, and, and you played I, I, I number, one. Yeah. number one, number mm one, -hmm. uh, number one music center in Hamburg, um, and uh, they have um, a video channel called the World of Vintage Guitars, which I'm. I have the honor to play all these instruments, mm. but I have another problem. I have also some jazz guitars, which is a nightmare for me because I'm not a jazz guy. I mean, I wish you would do that job <laughs> because you would enjoy the guitars. For me, it's like, man, there's another D'Angelico and it's a beautiful instrument, but I have no skills to make that, to make an appropriate yeah, me neither. Um, I mean, the, the, no, but but you you are more. I can fake some yeah, stuff, maybe. My, my fakes are so foul. Sorry for that. <laughs> but but but, the, 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 but it's an interesting thing. Yeah. Um, of course, vintage guitars is is a strange subject because things have gotten so incredibly expensive. expensive yeah. Some some things, and now after Corona, it's even worse because people yeah. didn't go on vacation and had the extra money, money. in the bank. And and. Uh, and so the prices are absolutely nuts. nuts. And, it's, and it's very hard to tell whether an instrument is a good instrument or it's just, you know... Average. It's on the market, yeah. has a market value. Because a lot of these guitars haven't been played for a long time. Yeah, unfortunately. And, unfortunately. It's not like Stradivarius who are supposed to be played every day and, they, and investors give them as a loan to musicians. Players, but yeah. but uh, like Bursts, I, I, I doubt that a lot of bursts are being played regularly. No. They, they, I mean, besides of John Borna Massa playing everybody's <laughs> bursts. At, at one, for five minutes. For five minutes. <laughs> because um, he has so many bursts, yeah. he can only uh, play five um, minutes on them. But uh, but otherwise, it's not a lot of bursts. But anyway, it, it, this is, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because it is, there's a lot of like really interesting and beautiful vintage guitars that are not that expensive. And still, like, for instance, one of the greatest mysteries, uh, aside of maybe two types, a vintage Gretsch is cheaper than a new Gretsch. It's, it's, it, it, and it has more soul. Yeah. But I'm not saying new Gretsches are not good. No, 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 no. Incredible, no. incredible guitars. guitars. But if you are, in, and that's what I said, yeah. if, if you are in this because of this sort of, there is a life in there. Yeah. You, this is almost like a person that's speaking to you. Somebody, some, yeah. some experience, some smell from bars or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you want that, then there are instruments out there that, that are absolutely affordable. And, uh, and they have that story, but it shouldn't be a Strat, a Taylor or a Les Paul because yeah. this is what everybody wants. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's not a good idea if you have no budget. And I wouldn't buy any of these guitars no. now either because but the it's problem is that the, 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 since there's so much money in it, it's a lot of forgery. So yeah. there's fakes all over the place. It's always some issue, mm. and, and and the slightest issue makes everybody negotiate the price with you uh, to an extent where it's not worth the pain. Yeah? yeah. But but sometimes you find an old instrument like this instrument was. I found that on eBay. Because yeah. it was lacquered over, it's not yeah. even refinished. No, you could it's... get this off. It, I think it's originally it's natural. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't don't <laughs> yeah. worry. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, Heavy relic now. <laughs> yeah, and and it's it it didn't cost a lot of money. Now, uh, and, and it's a perfectly playable strat. '70s strat that yeah. does the exact you know does the Richie Blackmore whatever thing. <laughs>
me three springs. I put this one straight and only the no. How do I do it? Yeah, I, there's, yeah. there's there's ah, there's a lot of ways to do it. There's this there's the classic Fahian uh, 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 version. You you ever seen this with the with the, the with the bar? You know that 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 the bar. It, this bar goes like this. Ah, yeah, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and then you 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 look. Uh, it's it's a little bit more like yours. It's mm -hmm. way more up, higher, higher. Ah, and, and, you, and then it's it's the G string. You can bend it up a, a, a minor, minor third, third and, yeah, yeah. and you know, and the, the, a second and one. This is this one. This is it has a different feel. Yeah. Uh, this is a different feel. Yeah. This I'm is fine with that. I'm, I'm I'm I have no problems with strat uh, tremolos. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing extreme dive bombs with them, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, this is this is my setup. So you can do the interval thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny, I know Karl Verheyen, but I I've done this even before that. Even. Yeah. But anyway, it's a it's, natural it, thing. It makes it's, sense. No, it's, it's, of course, it's it's a, somebody look what the tension you yeah. you want to, it, so the, the lower strings have more tension. So ah, you, see, this is how I do it. I have this uh, straight, but I have the lower string uh, more tension, and I put this sideways to have more tension on the lower strings. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, uh, that's, that was my logic. If it helps, I don't know. Yeah, I just did it. In, in the end, yeah. it doesn't matter. This is, this is far out. It just goes up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, half it's, a note, kind of. It's just to to to. to you know, we both. Uh, the, the other thing that we have in common, I think, we are both fans of Ray Gomez. Oh yeah, and, and this is somebody not everybody knows. Yeah, I could shock Rick Beato with Ray Gomez. I mean, uh, oh. uh, Rick Rick knows everybody, he and he's me. And I played two tracks of Ray Gomez to him, and he said he was shocked. It's like, who is this guy? I said you should you should know him. Yeah, of course. And then, you know... We, we use, the thing is, Rick Beato is, of course, a Californian guy in, in, in his studio days. Yeah. And, 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 and Ray Gomez, to, to, to you guys out there who don't know Ray Gomez, uh, he, he, he originally came from Europe, like Spain, Spain and France and yeah. so on. South of France. South of France. And he, he was part of a, of, of, of a Spanish pop band that played Mammy, Mammy Blue, <laughs> Mammy Blue. And, and emigrated to the U.S. And he he went to the U.S. Oh, first he went to London mm -hmm. and worked with George Harrison, and then he and then he went to the U.S. and I think his first gig was was with John Lennon. Well, that's okay. He was a studio guitarist <laughs> and so on, but then he he became you know guitarist with um, uh, Stanley Clark. And if you don't know Ray Gomez. Checking him out. Just, just look yeah. in, in YouTube. Because he's one of the, I think, the major strat stylists yeah. that I know. Yeah. He's. <laughs> some of the stuff that you know from Jeff Beck, he came up with it, with it the same first. time, or maybe first, first. even. Yeah. And, and he. Um, and he's and, and also he has incredible chops. Yeah. yeah. Um, so so it's uh, uh, yeah he's he's kind of an underrated hero. Yeah. There's one trick he does because of his chops. He has a super low string action. Yeah. I know because I know somebody that played his guitar. I've okay. never played his guitar. Okay. Yeah. I've never met him. I'm, but um, so he plays strats. But I know somebody that is honest enough to tell. Yeah. Anyway. He, he, that, that's his thing, but if you are a strat guy, Ray Gomez, check yeah. him out. And this is like, uh, the guy means it. I mean, I mean, you know, the, the song sometimes starts so smooth. Something like that. And then it gets mean, you know. And, you know. But the thing is, it's not about speed, but it's like, there's this, ah. it's, it's kind of a, it's, this, he is the guy of, Gutsy sort of desperation. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, 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 Raul is also a great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. And so, and if you're looking for this, and and and, and, and you, you you know Thomas and you like Thomas, then um, you then will find check, some. Check, check, check. No, it's, it's different, but but we know why we love this. <laughs> Bends and stuff like that. Okay, um, maybe back. 
um, okay, now we had your, your nice guitar. What about back to amps? I mean, you are a, I mean, you played everything because uh, as a session guy, mm -hmm. but uh, when I met you first, you were with Rodgar Monotones using the Roy O Grande amps, mm -hmm. the Rio Grande by Thomas Reusenzehn, you know, that famous. Who sadly passed away a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And, but he was the, I wouldn't say he wasn't, he was the Howard Dumble of our area because that's a, that's a wrong uh, uh, comparison. But he, he was a, he was a very individual guy who, who had a strong opinion and had also a strong taste. He wouldn't, he, if you would come and say, can you do this a little more accessible or something, he would say, nah. <laughs> yeah. And, and he wasn't that accessible. Yeah. But. <laughs> But he was he was a great guy, yeah. Uh, because this is what counts in the end. Yeah, it's not this sort of service mentality, but it's somebody who really has a vision, and and says, well, I'm I'm doing this because I believe in that. And and to be honest, I I tried a lot of amplifiers in the last yeah almost 40 years now that I have this thing, and nobody has beaten this guy. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so uh, what can I say? Let's try. You brought another one with you, uh, which is also heavily modded. Yeah. Um, so we, we listen to a few. Um, this is the input, I guess. Yeah. And we have to swap. Wait, is that, this is standby and off. Um, this so, is it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is. And the interesting thing, and you, you, you might remember Thomas playing this one yeah. in the beginning. This is basically the same amp. I mean, the, like the original, like the the, the, the the basic amp. It's a ninety. It's a late, I would say, seventy eight, seventy nine JMP. Mm -hmm. And this is the modding. Um, and this is modded by a, another. German mod, uh, amp guy called Dirk Baldringer, who was, who was really famous in the 80s and who was a co designer of the dual tone for Jusen Jusen Kettner. Kettner. Yeah. I brought him to Jusen Kettner. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay, you are still in the M1. No, 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 no. no. Oh. Anyway, so you play your amp. Well, anyway. I, I don't, I shut up for a moment. No, no, no. It's, it's, <laughs> it, it, um, it's, it's, it's the same concept. Besides, of it also has a clean channel, which at some time people put all kinds of stuff in Marshalls. <laughs> That's why you get them cheap. Yeah. Because oh, it's not original. It's not original. Yeah. But you, who, who cares? You gotta listen. Yeah. And and the the, 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 the but the, the basic sound is different. It's a little tighter. It has a little more gain. Then it's not as broad as this one with the spark in the mid yeah. range. Um, so it's maybe a, it's too much hum with this guitar. But yeah, no, no, you are very close to the transformer. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll turn yeah. it like this. <laughs> Class A thing also going on, <laughs> but you 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 get the drift. It's 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 not as edgy, and it's a little more, you know. It yeah. has, the, and but it's it it's it if you if you play with uh, pedals and so on, it gets a more I would say civilized sound with single coils mm -hmm. than that than that one. This is, as you you could tell, this is always a fight. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, it's, it's, it's a, a pleasure to it's fight. It's a fight worth yeah. fighting, but you know <laughs> sometimes you don't want to fight. And and this uh, is more of a. I use that in the studio a lot with a strat with noiseless pickups. Mm -hmm. That so you could turn up the gain really high, uh, and it, there's still a kind of transparency going through from the single coils from the single coils or the fake yeah. single coils anyway, yeah. and. And this is, but it's not like a Bogner or a diesel. It's not a high gain amp. So it's higher gain than a normal amp, but, but still not classic. But still, it's yeah. more in the in the classic ballpark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I played this on on the jazz rock albums. I played that a lot, and and I played that live too with with this band with Moritz. And 
and you you have to when you have a drummer like that you don't bring your 18 watt boutique something you <laughs> no need, you, you need 18 watts with with Moritz Müller you are not there you, yeah. you don't you are not even there anymore oh, yeah you need Moritz, to, Moritz takes yeah. over the stage yeah and it's great yeah so you you, you, you need to have 100 watts you need <laughs> something you yeah. know and I knew that so I brought this <laughs> I brought this uh, guy, and and it, did that work really good? It, it stays very transparent with uh, strats, in the, uh, even it, it, it's not it's not like and 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 dynamic. It's not like a high gain amplifier, and 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 it, we were talking about amp guys, and of course it's the the, the famous guys, uh, uh, Ronald Borgner, who went to California, is from Stuttgart or something that area. Ulm, the, Ulm, he's from yeah. Ulm, and. And Peter Dietzel, who was still in Germany, but rose to fame during the early 2000s, and because the, the amps, because the amps are unique. That's the great yeah. thing about yeah. it. It's an own take. It's let me do yeah, my yeah, challenge. Sure, 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 sure. I, I, I'm, you know, because yeah, I'm yeah. always glad to have. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I like that. Um, Mo uh, gain mode. So I'm switching back. I hope this works. Surprisingly, <laughs> it's um, the, the, I, I mean, I think I'm kind of close, okay? Yeah, I, sure, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not 100%. <laughs> this one for a second. No, it's too modern. It's too... Okay, just the settings is norm, it's vintage, full gain, um, bass at 7, middles at 4.5, and treble the same, 4.5. Um, a pretty normal setting, which means what, what we all like is, is my standard thing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I'm so influenced yeah. by these M's and Dirk yeah. Baldringer that I kind of take that. I could use the classic channel too. Let me see the. Now I need a low gain mode. Sorry. <laughs> this is my, my personal. close with this one too. 
Um, but this is where it's coming from, for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the tone, and this is where, yeah, this is a little bit more beautiful than the, 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 the Roy. And back to the kind of the characters we get from the M's comes from the guys that have a certain character. I mean, this kind of Reusenzehn, Thomas Reusenzehn is also that kind of guy. That <laughs> his character was yeah, like, but, the, but, like but, his M's. But, but the interesting thing is, and I'm, I'm, I'm not even, I don't, since these M's are so different, I've, I've had the way I, Thomas uh, modded these amp amps in, in the A's and he modded hundreds of them. And I've had a couple of those and they all sounded different. So it's, it's, it was, since Marshalls all sound different. And, uh, and that's, that's the interesting thing. You can do very kind of sweet stuff with it, but in the end, if it comes to the sheer Darwinism of <laughs> amps on stage, and I've, I've, we played with the Montauk, we just recently we played with a band that, uh, in, in, that in, they opened up for us. It was a cover band that had a lot of like new Friedmans, you know, yeah. and they, they were beautifully sounding amplifiers, great amplifiers. But not as raw. But it was a little bit like, now you played kids, now go, <laughs> now the grown-ups come. It was, it was really strange. And, I, I, I'm, and it's not that I, I don't want this. I'm, I'm just, I'm just uh, 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 you know, experiencing it. <laughs> <laughs> the dirt. The, the, the point is some people want, yeah, it's too muddy here and it needs to be that. No, if the dirt is no, in I the can, tone at the right spot, I, I can man. Show you, I can show you what, what, what it's, it's always this thing that people are looking for um, that kind of tightness. Yeah. You want to play? Which was mine. Wait, 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 no, no. I plug you into your, oh, yeah. in the switching system, okay. you can. So, so let, me, let me go to Thomas again. Ah. When we have to uh, yeah. uh, stand by here, or is this this is it's done? done. You can, it's done. Okay. Yeah. Then we go and up blind and have the speaker out. Yeah. Okay. And this is the amp number four. Mm -hmm. and this, is, this is my <laughs> Jörg, the Jörg, the Jörg Tandler version of, of Thomas guitar. <laughs> we the, the the Gold Brothers. Yeah. Are we? Is it on? It's on. Okay. Um, the idea is that you have. You know, this is for, for, a, for a modern player. This is way, way too, too much boomy. Big, yeah. Turn it really up. So all tightness is uh, is has to come from fighting. <laughs> There's always this, yeah, on, on, and this is of course any modern uh, metal guy would say, no! I hate this. This yeah. is the most yeah. terrible thing. But of course, for us old farts or people that are much metal guitarists, they it's kind of a that's the cushion that you sit on, yeah. and and it, and it makes a nice fundamental tone, and I, then I would uh, describe it like. You form the tone yeah. out of. And and that's that's why I like these amp. Of course, it's it's every once in a while you would totally. It goes on your nerves, you know. You you know this. Now, Marshall's getting after a while. Ah, get out of my face because it's 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 hard. At, you know, it, I've 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 spent a lot of time in front of Marshalls in uh, in my life since maybe 80, 81, 82. So, <laughs> yeah, but shut up. <laughs> but great, great. I'm reading a few ca comments here. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Um, so. Royce and Saint Guitar Slave 100 was the best amp ever. Well, 
uh, that that was the power amp. It was the power amp. It it was like a, a Marshall power amp basically, but in a rec twice. Space. To, uh, yeah. In a, in a, so Stereo. it was two hundred yeah. watts, two hundred. Two channels of each 100. Yeah. It, it was heavy like fuck, but it was great it, it back was, in the rec days because it was the non-compromised yeah, thing. It, it was non-compromised because it, 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 there was a couple of those because in the, in the rec days there was the Mesa Boogie and so on and so on. But this was the EL34 based power amp that had a true Marshall thing. Yeah, okay. I'm reading another interesting uh, technical comment from Nikos Politis. Sounds Greek to me. Why amp manufacturers don't use switching power suppliers nowadays and keep using heavy power transformers? Well, that that's the thing. If you go all tube, mm -hmm. old school all tube, mm -hmm. you don't have a technician that does switch mode power supplies because that's a totally different technology that a guy has to design with a totally different brain. And the guys that have the knowledge on the good old tube amps they don't usually have that knowledge on switch mode things. The stuff that I'm doing, it's me, there's a Russian engineer, there's a German mm -hmm. other guy, so we are a team. And I know who is the right guy for the which challenge. I, my, the best thing about me is I love the, the challenge and I know whose mindset is the best to, to come up with something crazy. Um, so to, to make this kind of lightweight amps, which you can hear, is the same power, blah, blah, blah. Um, um, we could use such a power supply in a Marshall as well and save a lot of weight. But I'm going all the way because then I'm already, you know, half the way. I, yeah. it, you know, the amp would be like this <laughs> because the transformer sits on the one side. Yeah. I need to still the and outward transformer. It, it, and, and, and the thing is, one... It, uh, I think the great thing is that these exist because exactly. they f they are the the benchmark, the idea. They, yeah. This is this way it comes from. Absolutely. And, and what I love about your stuff is that it has enabled me to do things with it that I could could have not done with these. Yeah. It's especially in this low gain uh, area where it's an original thing. It's ki kind of an idolized TM forty five. You know, the, the, the real amps don't sound. That's like this, yeah. and and this is and this is what what is actually the step forward in which I of course prefer to uh, amps that say yeah we have everything. I yeah. mean I've, I have no problems, and I think you you've, you you dealt with this a lot. You have, I have no problems with digital amplifiers, and I have a Kemper at home, and it's no problem. Yeah, um, but it's, it's a different thing. It's a different thing. It's yeah. a completely different thing. If if we're talking about uh, amplifiers as as musical instruments, you yeah. Know, like a Tweed Deluxe or a Marshall, so yeah. especially because they have idiosyncrasies that are kind of unpleasant at first, and you have to deal and address them, and then it goes into your playing, and then something happens in between the 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 the, the, the amplifier and yourself. Yeah, and it's, it's the same thing with old guitars. Yeah, old guitars are uh, not at all ideal. Easy. Yeah. They're, they're not easy. They're, they're divas. Yeah, you know? it's like you have a horse. You have to tame the horse yeah. first before mm -hmm. you you are you become a team. You know, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. the first round on the horse that w will throw you off the back. And, and <laughs> absolutely, and and we, we we demoed a lot of old guitars and a lot of those guitars, um, not even the ones that it's just set in the drawer. I mean, that's another yeah. problem. But even the ones that have been played a lot, at first you think, yes, oh, yeah. are you serious? <laughs> what is this? Yeah. Um, and then you 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 slip into the mindset of of, so, of somebody, and that that's interesting, I think. Yeah, just because I have it here on my little preparation, um, we're talking about the guys in Germany that modded Marshall. Some of mm -hmm. them became really famous, like mm -hmm. Reinhold Bogner, mm -hmm. like Peter Dietzel, mm -hmm. um, the guys that have not as much fame, but also did their thing. I mean, Thomas Reusenzehn yeah. with the Röhr Grande. Um, then there is um, a guy called Manny Reckmeyer who works for Peter Weyer, our yeah. your friend, my idol, another idol. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One day I have Peter on my show as yeah. well. I tried two times already. Yeah. And he... Peter is, for the non-German, uh, Peter, Peter Weyer is like the, 
the mixture of Tim Pierce and Steve, Steve Lukather Lukather. in Germany. It's, yeah. It, he's, he, uh, as a studio guitarist, he played on, like in the, especially in the 80s and 90s, he played on like every Everything. record. Everything. Yeah, like, and, 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 and he was the only guy in Germany who, who uh, had put so much attention to detail comparable to like the major studio guys in America or Nashville or oh. Los Angeles. And, and so he knows he has tried every tube, Everything. every speaker, every, every amplifier. Every guitar, every channel strip, and every switch. The other, the other day, he told me about maybe the, he did the same telephone call with you. I said, you know, I fucked myself with the switching system because yeah. I'm a professor. He's a professor, and he uses like um, what's the scientific methods? Yeah. For, not not like us. We plug in and yeah, yeah. we have a feel for it. And no, no, he's he is next level. He he goes, wait, I have to test myself if I'm actually not being able to do a fake with myself. So he double yeah. checks himself. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a double it's, faulty whatever yeah, method. Yeah. And, 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 and sometimes he asks, should I keep all this? And then I said, well, you're the guy that the <laughs> profilers have to come to, you know, yeah. uh, because he has all the amplifiers and everything. Yeah. And it, it, incredible guitarist, by the way, yeah. it, besides of being this uh, professor. And I spent a whole day with him talking about ABR bridges, like a yeah. whole day um, in between what we had to do. So if you, have, if you want anything, <laughs> want to know anything about it. Ask Peter, yeah. you know, because he, I mean, by the way, Peter um, recommended me to buy this guitar. He said, Thomas, buy this. And he's like, this is all you need to know. He's a nice guy. And he said, you better buy this guitar. This is the right Les Paul for you. Mm -hmm. And this was like 10 years ago and it looked like shit, mm -hmm. but he was right. I yeah. mean, and um, you know, he, he knew that I didn't want to spend that much money and uh, I would, you know, but this has now an original ABR bridge yeah. as well. Yeah. And you know, it makes the right noise and um, I'm happy. I'm happy. And Manny Reckmeyer is the technician that um, did a lot of, of mods for amps. He was the studio. main guy. He was the main guy. He modded amps for Peter, yep. and he was the bench. Uh, one of the earliest guys that d did work on that kind of level, on that expertise level, and he uh, he d d did a lot of stuff for for Peter and for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. and there's Larry, uh, Larry, Larry Ems, Larry Grossman, mm -hmm. who is, I think, Nuremberg. Mm -hmm. I, I've been to his home. We traded tubes. You know, when I was still in my tube, old school. Uh, face mm -hmm. um, you know it's like oh you have the gold pins uh, you can have some of those and oh you have the, the you, you have the real mullets the the yellow ones or the uh, okay and so you know I give you some of mine you get me some of them yeah. and, you know so and and he's he's a pedant or what a, a, a total nerd let's <laughs> let's just uh, putting in okay this has this many milliamperes and and yeah I mean, Larry M's is another thing they are tight for my personal taste too tight as we both like the yeah, muddiness yeah, yeah. I, I think it's but 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 the, 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 that's the great thing about these uh, marshals who basically are not that exp or were not expensive they were like mi middle class and, and you got them used for absolutely reasonable money and they are fantastic tuning bases, platform. platform platform and 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 that's why and it, it and it opened up several doors i mean there's 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 a whole there's a whole school of high gain tight high gain amps that are originally Marshalls that, Marshall mods yeah and it just went into a completely different area yeah. and 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 we I come from the I mean in for that in for <laughs> other kinds of music yeah. it's different but but for that for this kind of you want to sit on the sound on stage and. That, and that's why you you worked on this tube, you know, on the tube yeah. to get this kind of feel. Feel, yeah. Um, and and that, if you want that, then you have to go this way. Yes. So guys, I think we spent a lot of time. Do we have another question here? Cables, labels, uh, what? Uh, uh, 
Peter muss unbedingt mal vor, vor die Kamera. Ja, yeah. also we're talking about Peter Weil. Yeah, yeah. We both have to convince him. One day he will do it. I, I talked with him and it nearly went uh, well, but um, yeah. Uh, okay, somebody else in, in German. Money hatte ich letztes Jahr vor der Linse, hatte zwei alte Föchse im Gepäck. Jetzt sind sie wieder gesund. Ah, okay, somebody in String Theory says um, uh, that he has two old Vox amps yeah, repaired. Yeah, yeah, but Manfred was also, is, is a special, like old, old AC30s are uh, suicidal, suicidal <laughs> amplifiers. Yeah. They uh, bake themselves. Yeah. And if you, like, you take, you make a tour with an old Vox, it has to be completely overhauled after that. <laughs> yeah. I stopped that. I, I love Voxes, but, yeah. but this is too much. Yeah, and my Vox, again, is also service for Manny Reckmeyer yeah. because he is the expert. Yeah. And um, yeah, the, the Vox are class A and they get so hot. So the, the heat kind of dries the capacitors mm -hmm. and this is where it starts. <laughs> and it ends somewhere else, sometimes in no sound. Um, explosion in the studio. I had this, and then it stank like muggy. I had this uh, the other day. I was phoning with a, um, a producer where I recorded a lot in the studio, and I remember I had a hundred watt uh, Marshall, a plexi reissue mm -hmm. back then, which went up in fire on that <laughs> on that studio session. You know, I was playing. You know, okay, ah, it's in, in, so in, hot. Yeah, in, in the recording room, and, and the amp was in the next room. Um, so, and I, and I think, you know what? Somehow the sound gets a bit w weak. So, and I turned around, and the other room was already full of smoke. So, I had to open the door, grab the handle, and throw it out in the garden <laughs> behind the studio, you know, because it caught fire and smoked. Yeah, anyway, this. This was uh, the story that came back. Good memories. Wow. Um, well, good memories. I think um, any news on MX? Yes, you will hear news on MX. But there is an official launch at the when is it? The third of June. Is it the third of June? Yes. This is where you get all the news. Maybe the maybe the live stream before. Um, but there's always news. Psh. Um, when is English Tone Tracker going to be published? And, ah, so the Tone Tracker or the, um, the sounds we have on the German side for this moment. And as you could see, I'm collecting more sound examples. And as we do the whole translation in the batch, we are still waiting for maybe a week and then the English one will be there. So guys, for now, please stay on the German side. It's an English anyhow. It says Marshall, it says settings, and forget about the three German words there. Um, yeah, um, on the English side, you don't, simply don't see it. But it will come, we will do a batch, because otherwise we have to do it by hand and blah, blah, blah. It's too much work. Kai, you know him, is uh, working on this. Uh, any other questions? At Ali, sind deine Solos wie zum Beispiel volle Lotte improvisiert oder komponiert? Okay, um, there's a question in German um, from Fabio Four. Are your solos on volle Lotte? Volle Lotte means full force. It's, it's, a, it's a song, it's by, the, by Monotones, by our band. Uh, is it composed is, or is it improvised? It is in a way composed. Um, really? Yeah, it, it, it's uh, it, it, it's more like you try something in the studio, and then you find something that you yeah. like, and then you stick with it, and then you kind of work something out. Oh, that so 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 in the end, when I, I play this live, I basically play what what I played on the record. Okay. And I and and and, and that's another thing with uh, what we learned from ZZ Top. That he plays a lot. Uh, Billy Gibbons plays a lot of uh, composed solos, because otherwise, when you get into a kind of a random noodling in the trio setting, yeah. it and you can't come up with something over all original every concert. No. So, yeah. so, so he really plays solos as a part of the composition, which mm -hmm. makes total sense to me. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I mean, for me. 
playing uh, stuff, it depends on the song. Um, oh, Paul. Hi, Paul. Who is there, Paul? Paul Gill McGilloway. Ah, cool. Hi. Hey. Um, hey, hey, yeah. Thanks for loving the show. Yeah, thanks for joining in, Paul. Um, um, that I'm, yeah, I mean, for me, it's always a thing, certain songs, they sound better with kind of melodies, solos that have a story. At least you have to tell the story. Maybe you interpret the story with a bit of phrasing differences. I, I, I saw... I, I saw Steely Dan uh, in, in some newer form and this the guitarist John Harrington, you know, playing with Steely he, he does. And you know, the Steely Dan, of course, is famous for having uh, the best worn, out, worn out legions of guitarists. Yeah. Uh, and he did a great thing. He kind of, he played the solos of the, but he gave him his own twist. Yeah. Uh, every time, so it, it was the spirit of the original solo, yeah. but it was him bringing himself to the table. That yeah. I, I thought this was very, very smart, smart and yeah. very musical and great. It was not just stupid. Yeah, I got to learn this Jake Raiden thing because it, it's great, and you know, there's and some, nobody can play like Raiden. Yeah, yeah it, it, if you try to play the the, the peg solo, you you <laughs> fail because it, yeah. it's it's it's. It's something that you are you are being pushed in the studio to do, and it and even himself probably would have problems to do it exactly the same. Al yeah. Although he did he did show it on on YouTube a yeah. lot of times. But um, I find the, the the amount of little improvisations in a night at a live concert important. That you don't have all things worked out, so you have. To, I, I, you know, we play the rock anarchy, mm -hmm. and there is anarchy, and there needs to be fresh energy mm -hmm. that comes from surprising moments. And this has to be. If there's too much structure, it doesn't happen. So I like that. But on the other hand, I also like the story of a song, and then make it a, a nice interpretation. It's like if you you are doing Rilke uh, um, interpretations. Yeah and make music with it and it's like how to pronounce things how to color yeah, it I've, 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 it's beautiful I've, I've done a lot of like a lot of the studio work that I've been doing especially like the last 20 years was there is never really a or very very rarely a guitar solo but it was basically only fills that yeah. kind of sort of sculpture the song because it leads from one part to the other so you you're more of a of a guide who guides a, a song from a to b and that's so that did you use a booster the, uh, yeah there, there's a question of ulrich Püschel yeah. um for your ali uh, did you use a booster in front of the royston scene playing at Ron no, no. no because the booster is kind of built in there it's that a, kind of extra is, mid low mid kind of a mid boost in in uh, the only stuff that i play in front of the, the amp or did play was a chorus pedal <laughs> and because it's when you have two guitars it's sometimes good when one guitar moves a little bit mm -hmm. so it's not as stale you know yeah. and it, 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 i found it it, it's, it 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 works well with the other guitar but I, it's never a booster okay but um, you know the the amp is so honest and this is about the rodka monotones tone it's like don't stay there work and form the tone with your hands. And yeah, this, this, yeah, this. you have to be. It's, it's the, 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 those gigs are by far the most demanding. challenging, physically yeah. demanding gigs. First of all, because of the volume. <laughs> yeah. um, then you have to work the audience all the time. And then you have to, this is not convenient. Yeah. This is M's that have to be, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> Yeah, this is like the horse. This but, is the but wild it's, horse. But it's gratifying, I, yeah. I tell you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm totally with you. I'm, I'm loving this challenging, this challenges, because after a gig like that, of course, you are kind of tired, but you're also, this is the real deal. Now back to playing in huge bands, being on huge crowds, mm -hmm. that even though if you had 150,000 people in front of you, it's not as challenging 
as playing one of those gigs. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's a different thing. I it's mean, a, it's it's much more. These gigs are much more. You have to be part. You're part. You're almost like in a choir. Yeah. You're you're part of a big a, a, arrangement. A, a something, yeah. and you have to do this. You have to do this appropriately, and you have to do this convincingly. That's that's all clear. You don't have yeah. to just stand there some as some gala um, <laughs> But but uh, but it's not this kind of. You really work. Have to work. You know. Yeah. Yeah, but that, 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 that's why I still like to play live, and this is mm -hmm. why I have uh, my bands and why we celebrate that thing. For me, it's ac actually that's. It's it's like a, a soccer game where you you have to fight and this I mean it's a beautiful game because it's like yeah it's it's phys it's physical, it's physical and and of course it was was the fun when we I was playing with you guys was that it's it, it, in in contemporary music there's not a lot of improvisation going yeah. on this is not this is rarely the case especially in rock music there's in jazz of course there is but yeah. but in in rock music it's, it's very very little improvisation it's all very clean cut and 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 to play in a band that actually has you know the freedom to do something you know it, it, it doesn't have to be all this sort of wanking around on the guitar it's it's more like creating sounds and creating uh, uh emotion and so on it's i uh, that that's that sets it apart it's cool yeah last question for you do you still use the cordman guitar ali no i don't have it anymore what is the cordman guitar the, uh, there's i i sent you a, a, a photo of me in front of 90000 people ah. and that's me with the cordman guitar um uh, that I, what's was a, that story yeah. okay um, I was, I was, um, that was in Wackersdorf. Yeah, here we are. Yeah. And this was a kind of a Jackson type power strat guitar yeah. that Thomas Kortmann, who's also a luthier from, from the Frankfurt sure. area, yeah. built for me. But I, um, I went through this phase and then I eventually sold it. It was a beautiful guitar. It was great. Mm -hmm. It was the Blaue Renate. That's what's the name. <laughs> the Blue Renate. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, and by the way, we have something coming about Marshall Amps as a pedal platform. Mm -hmm. Because um, you being a guy that played so many gigs with so many Marshalls and um, modding them is one way. And the other way is using them more or less cleanish or clean yeah, yeah. and have great. pedals in combination to get to great results. Yeah. And so this will be also on this channel whenever, maybe pretty soon, maybe later. But this is also something we we do. Um, which is not considered a lot. Which, yeah. Uh, because normally people think, well, like, uh, it's, it's supposed to be a clean fender or, or, or Vox or Matchless or something. and And, but Marshalls are not that bad. Exactly. Kind of so having you here for the Marshall side, I have um, a, a, a Mick Wall for the Fender side coming mm -hmm. um, one day. Um, Fender, the pedal platform, well, that's a classic, obviously. And Vox is the third one. And it's actually hard to find people. I mean, there's um, the other Christian Neander, another Neander yeah. in Berlin. Uh, from the band Selig. Yeah. Um, he played Vox, yeah. Yeah, he played Vox, and he he's, he is kind of the, the guy that I would think of, but he's too far. It's 700 kilometers from here, and um, he probably knows me, but we are not so well connected because it's a different scene. Anyway, um, I have somebody else coming for the, for this, but that's that's something interesting also to, to see where the roots are, you know, where the amps come from and how you deal with them. And, yeah, and they have, the, of course, they have a musical history. Absolutely. All the classic, all the classic amps have a musical history and um, they have, uh, and this, it's very specific. Like Vox is an own, it's a whole own new a universe. universe. Yeah. And, and uh, it's interesting, every once in a while I get, uh, I, Try out things and say, "Whoa, what is this? This is this is cool." Um, then I go back to Marshall's <laughs> eventually, but no. Yeah, no, no. We, we kind of 
uh, are torn between different M's. And no, no. I, I, I just, I just recently, I have had a amp uh, modded to be a, like a dumbbell, a, a friend of training room. That's that's a completely different story, a completely different game, and it's it's it, for me it's new. It, I'm 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 kind of diving into it. It's really interesting. Yeah. Okay. Finally, I have to recommend Ali's yeah. organ quartet um, again and featuring Ralf Guske. He's just smiling at me yeah. <laughs> at, the, at the back of the CD. Hey, Ali, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, it's always a, a super big pleasure for many reasons. Just, I mean, your phrasing, your tone, your everything in the, the, the whole package is always like that. The humor and the Nierenspieß dish in the Saarland. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody gets that, but it's, uh, you know, he, he is a very um, um, how, awake man that sees a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressing. Okay, thanks, Ali. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, see you next week. All the best. Bye bye. Ciao.